We welcome you here at the place of God's grace. Bunton CME Church. You can find us over here at 500 Waffle Street. Our very own pastor, Dykes. Before we move forward in this worship experience, I have a few announcements. We still have our prayer call Tuesdays, Sunday school, the same call in is the same as the prayer band. We are now doing noon and evening Bible study in person. Sunday school in person from 9 a.m. to 9.50 a.m. Don't forget our friends and family day is every second Sunday. Please invite friends and family. Praise team practice is every Thursday at 6.30 p.m. Our Clee Fall Festival will have people out in the foyer after church to sign up to bring and donate things. There will be a brief meeting after the service today in the chapel for missionary. The stewardess will meet on Saturday, October the 1st at 10 a.m. Our birthdays for the week, Bessie Davis, Romacina Holman. We praise God for them. Happy birthday. Amen. Please stand for our opening hymn. Five twelve. We are climbing Jacob's ladder. Climbing, we are climbing Jacob's ladder. We are climbing Jacob's ladder. We are climbing Jacob's ladder. Soldiers of the Every round goes higher and higher. 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 Soldiers of the across sinners do you love my jesus sinner do you love my jesus sinner do you love my If you love him, why not serve him? If you love him, why not serve him? If you love, if you love him, why not serve him? If you love him, why not? Soldiers, soldiers of the Cross. We are climbing. We are climbing. Jacob's ladder. We are climbing. 
praise God for God himself. Please remain standing for as we affirm our faith. Who do we believe in? I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born on the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is sitting at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he showed to the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. At this time, we will have prayer by Reverend Ballinger, followed by scripture, Reverend Cross. Good morning. Good morning. Father God, which art in heaven, we come to you right now just thanking you for your spirit, Father God. For thanking you for your Holy Ghost power that woke us up this morning, Father God. For thanking you for allowing us to be able to have the use of our limbs, Father God, right now. To be able to gather in front of the TV here in the house, Father God, we just thank you. We thank you for allowing us to see the, the rain that's falling so softly, Lord Jesus. To be able to feel the breeze in the air, Father God. We just thank you. Father God, we thank you for another day just to praise your holy and divine name. And if we've done anything that's not like you, Father God, to make it right, Father God. If we have an order against our sister or our brother, Father God, we ask that you fix that right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, anything that's not like you, we ask you to remove it from us, Father God, so that we can praise your holy and divine name in spirit and in truth. Now, Father God, we come praying for those who are in the house, but Father, we pray for those who are worshiping virtual us today. Father God, we just thank you and we praise you. Then we come praying for those who are sick and shut in, Father God. Those who are sick in their minds and their bodies and their souls and in their spirit. We come asking you to send a touch into the room right now, Father God. Send a touch into their hearts right now, Father God. Send a touch into their mind right now, Father God. Send a touch into their spirit right now, Father God. Father God, move like a mighty rushing wind, Father God, so that they will be able to just give you the glory, Father God, in the midst of their pains, in the midst of their sorrows, Father God. They be able to praise you, because all sickness is not unto death, but some is to glorify the Lord. And for that, we say thank you, Lord Jesus. You are a healer, Father God. You are a deliverer, Father God. You are a lawyer in a courtroom, Father God. You are a mother one with motherless, Father God. A father one with fatherless, Father God. We ask that you touch those who are bereaved right now, Father God. Whose hearts are weeping, but Father God. You say weeping may endure for a night, but joy, but joy, but joy is going to come in the morning. Father God, I thank you for the joy. I thank you for your spirit. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. Now, Father God, be with the man that's going to bring your word today. Father God, you gird him up in your spirit. Father God, and when he pours out to his people, then you fill him back up. You renew him, Father God. You make him whole again, Father God. Father God, and we'll never forget to give you all the praise and all the glory, for you are worthy to be praised. Let's begin to praise him right now. Hallelujah. 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 Good morning. And that hallelujah, I see a face I haven't seen in a while. I see a few people, but I just thank God today for Brother J.B. Browning. God bless you. And for all others, God bless you for coming in the house of the Lord and tuning in with us. Our scripture reading this morning, Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, verses 1 through 13. NIV blessings for obedience and it reads
If you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully follow all his commands I give you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations on earth. All these blessings will come on you and accompany you if you obey the Lord your God. You will be blessed in the city and blessed in the country. The fruit of your womb will be blessed and the crops of your land and the young of your livestock, the calves of your herds and the lambs of your flocks. Your basket and your kneading trough will be blessed. You will be blessed when you come in and blessed when you go out. The Lord will grant that the enemies who rise up against you will be defeated before you. They will come at you from one direction, but flee from you in seven. The Lord will send a blessing on your barns and on everything you put your hand to. The Lord your God will bless you in the land he is giving you. The Lord will establish you as his holy people, as he promised you on oath if you keep the commands of the Lord your God and walk in obedience to him. Then all the peoples on earth will see that you are called by the name of the Lord and they will fear you. The Lord will grant you abundant prosperity in the fruit of your womb, the young of your livestock and the crops of your ground in the land he swore to your ancestors to give you. The Lord will open the heavens the storehouse of his bounty to send rain on your lands in season and to bless all the work of your hands you will lend to many nations but borrow from none the Lord will make you the head and not the tail if you pay attention to the commands of the Lord your God that I give you this day and carefully follow them you will always be at the top never at the bottom the word of god for the people of god thanks be unto god amen let's give god glory for his word he is worthy to be praised somebody ought to start shouting right now the head and not the tail the head and not the tail the head and not the tail I'm going to say it one more time. The head and not the tail. All right. That's all right. It is now time for our music ministry. Amen. With that same beat, it is blessing time. It is return time. Please let us stand and be led by the ushers. Would our outside owls please stand and be led from the rear to the front, following the middle owls. We have three ways to give. We have our cash app, dollar sign life at Bunton. Give LaFly, or you can stop by at Bunton CME Church, 500 Walker Street, and the greatest seat in Spartanburg. Let us pray. 
We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the gift that was given. Lord, we ask you now to use it for the upbuild of your kingdom. Lord, I ask you to just continue to pour out your blessings upon us. Lay on the hearts of the ones that wanted to give, Lord God, and didn't have the means to. Father, right now we thank you. It is in your Son, Jesus Christ, I do pray. Amen. Amen. We will now hear from our music ministry, followed by the angel of the house, the word of God from Omar Dottie's.
with his wonderful God and give him a wonderful praise. If he's your all in all, go on and give him praise. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, the Lord our God is worthy to be praised. Can we just take about 30 seconds? Don't worry about your neighbor, but go on and praise him for you. Because he is your all in all. It's not about who's sitting next to you. But go ahead and give him praise. For all praises be to the King of Kings. To the Lord of Lord. He's wonderful. He's wonderful. He's wonderful. All praises be to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords because he's wonderful, wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, Way Maker, Burden Power, Heavy Lord, Terror, Lily, the Valley, Bright Morning Star. Is there anybody that loves to call him in the morning? Call him in the noonday. Call him when you're up. Call him when you're down. The more I call him, the better I feel. And the better that I feel, then the more that I call him. He is. He is. He is my all in all. I feel mighty all right right through here now. I said I feel good right through here now. I said I feel all right right through here now. Because he is my all in all. Let me do what I've come to do. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Every now and then, when you got a flashback that he's your all and all. Just every now and then, when you got a flashback of how wonderful he is, you start thinking of what the scripture says. If these don't praise me, then the rocks Go and cry out. But let me say it like this. I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on him. He got me out of my bed because my mind was stayed on him. He put breath in my body because my mind was stayed on him. Activity of my limbs because my mind stayed on him. I know it's preaching time. But every now and then, what he's already done for you ought to be your sermon for the day. That he's blessed you 
and brought you from a mighty long way. We can get to Deuteronomy later, but right now you ought to praise him for who he is to you, to you, to you. I'm glad to be in the service one more time. Thank you, choir, for reminding us. See, I'm convinced, I'm convinced, Mr. Wesley, that, that somebody's sermon, the words you need to hear today, may not be from Deuteronomy. The sermon you need to hear is that he's your all in all. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll get to Deuteronomy, but, but, but the sermon somebody needs to hear is that he's wonderful. That, 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 that's why you can't skip the music and just try to rush to the preaching. Because the word you, you need to hear may not be in the sermon. It might be in the song. But if you sit with him long enough, he'll show up. I declare he will. And when he shows up, he'll show out because there's something about recalling that he is your all and all. Thank you for everything that you have done for us. I, I, I just thank you, Lord. I'm convinced that, that not, not everybody prays the same way. That, that's right, that's right. Uh, but everybody ought to praise. And, and I'm convinced not everybody going to run around or dance. But, but can I just bless it the way that I feel? Because it says if I can't say a word. There you go. So, somebody know where I'm headed. Just go and wave your hand. Because if the Lord's been good to you, you ought to show some sign. When I think the goodness of Jesus and all that is done for me. Come on, let's stand on our feet. Let's stand on our feet. Stand on our feet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right there. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, it's the highest praise. Stay right there. Hallelujah. 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 Last time and then we're moving on. Hallelujah. 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 Right there. As you prepare, if you would, grab your Bible. You can be seated, but just stay right there in that moment, in that spirit. You can be seated if you need the Bible. Deuteronomy chapter 28. I want to read verses 
one and two. You hear the word of scripture. If you will only obey the Lord your God by diligently observing all his commandments that I am commanding you today, the Lord God will set you high above all the nations on the earth. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you if you obey the Lord your God. Amen. I want to preach from a thought today how to be blessed and stay blessed. Thank you ushers for serving. How to be blessed and stay blessed blessed. Life presents to us today something that we might not have at the forefront of our mind. And that is to recognize just how blessed you really are. I mean, it's, 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 it's one thing, it's one thing to say I'm blessed. It's another thing to really sit down and see how blessed you really are. Um, yeah, you, 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 you may not have the house you want to live in, but thank God for the roof that's over your head you, you, you really are blessed because somebody went to sleep last night under the stars not under the roof yeah 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 you may not have the car you wish to have but thank God you got a car that's reliable to get you from point A to point B because somebody's stranded and can't find a way of transportation. Yeah, yeah, you, you may not have the money in your account. You want to have, but thank God, your bills are paid. And, and, and help me, Holy Ghost, I feel it. And if your bills are not paid, keep on trusting God. He'll make a way. You know, beloved, we really are blessed beyond measure. We are blessed beyond what we deserve. And sometimes we take blessings for granted. Yeah, it's, it's, it looks like this. You walk in here. And you come into church, but, but before we, we took our seat, we forgot to tell God, thank you for traveling mercy. Because on your way to church, danger can still happen. And the old church would say like this, I thank God that he kept me from danger seen and unseen. We really are blessed. But let me argue this point today, and then I'll be out your way. Thank, thank God that we're blessed, but, but there's something about, uh, Sister Rose, being blessed and living in the abundance of your blessing. Uh, let, me, let me press it, let me press it. God didn't only wake you up. He woke up non-believers too. People that don't know him, he still woke them up. Okay. They, they, they're blessed too. Because the Lord woke them up. But the difference between 
them and us is that, that we are believers. And as believers, it's not just to live in the blessing, but it's to live in the abundance of the blessing. Pr press with me just for a second. Jesus says it like this. I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, the, the non-believer, the pagan, the sinner uh, does not have to believe and is still blessed. But there's something about being a believer that you live in the abundance of the blessing. Deuteronomy chapter 28, come here, it's, it's, it's really to show forth how we get to live in the abundance of the blessing and how we stay there. Deuteronomy, the, the book of the, the Pentateuch, it is the last book, Dudo, meaning second, as in the second covenant or the second law. It is the time that Yahweh, God, has come to the place to where God wants to reestablish God's covenant with Israel. Deuteronomy chapter 28 is that covenant of Shechem that comes to the place to where God says it like this. If you fully obey my commands, this is what will happen to you. This is what will happen. You fully obey my commands, this is what will happen. Blessings will come upon you. And, and not only will they come upon you, but they'll overtake you. Okay, that's really the whole sermon. No, no, but, but because I care for you, let me put a bow on it. If you obey my commandments, if you follow my word, if you do what I have called you to do, if you mind your business, if you work on your assignment, then God says blessings are going to come upon you. Now, some blessings are connected as it is printed upon the pericope or the unit of scripture that these blessings come by way of obedience. God says, if you obey what I have called for you to do, then blessings will come upon you. This is the challenge. The challenge is you have the power or the right to figure out whether you want to obey or not. God have mercy, I love your word. You have what we call free will. So just because the Lord has said it, it does not mean that you have to obey it. Uh, press, press just for a second. There are plenty of things that the Lord has already told you and you have yet to obey. Help me, Holy Ghost. It's going to get quiet right through here. But, but when you come to the place where you are looking for life to live in the abundance of the blessing, then, then, then my brother, my sister, it comes from your obedience. And obedience means that I woke up and made a conscious decision that what the Lord has said do, I'm going to do it. Now, now that, that's, that's, that's wonderful news, and, and I, I'm, I'm pressing on right through here. It is because you, you have a right to wake up every morning and make that choice if you're going to do what the Lord has called you to do, right? When you do it, you live in the abundance of the blessing. Here it is, and I'm, I'm pressing on to the next point. He, he says, not only will blessings come upon you, but they'll overtake you. 
Okay, that, 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 that was, you know, one of those where, where you know, you should have told God, thank you. Uh, not, not just because they come upon you, but they overtake you. Okay, let me, let me try it again. Class participation, 100%. Let's, let's go there. Um, because, see, some of us cannot praise God for the blessing overtaking us because we have yet to come into the place to be obedient for the blessing to come upon us. Ah, preach, Reverend. All right, I'm doing the best I can. Notice what he says, that the blessings will come upon you and they will overtake you. Let me fast forward through the unit because this is what he says. And, and when it happens, this is how it's going to look. You'll be blessed in the city. You'll be blessed in the field. In other words, the blessing that comes upon you and the blessing that overtakes you just does not remain with you. But wherever you go, you'll be blessed in the city and, and blessed in the field. That it's not just that God has enough blessings to bless you in one place, but wherever you shall go, you'll be blessed in the city and blessed in the field. And not only will you be blessed in the city or blessed in the field, but look at what he says. He says, secondly, and, and the womb, the fruit of your womb shall be blessed. So it's not just you that is being blessed. It's also those that have come from you and from the field that shall yield fruit shall be blessed so therefore it's not just you but it's your environment not only is it your environment but if you keep on reading around about uh verse seven you will see how he starts talking about uh those persons or your enemies that are going to come up upon you they will come one way but they will see you see the abundance of the blessing upon you and they will scatter seven ways yeah, you've missed it let me try it one more time the bible says that they will come up to you one way but but they will flee seven ways You've missed it. Let me try it one more time. The Bible says that they, they will come upon you. Uh, uh, they, they'll come up to you one way. Uh -huh, but let's do math because he said they'll flee seven ways. Jason, it, it, it would have been one thing if he had just said that they'll come one way and then they will flee one way. But the mere fact that he says that they'll come one way and then they'll flee seven ways says not only is he going to remove them from you, but he's also going to tear them apart themselves. <laughs> Help me, Holy Ghost. In other words, when you are living in the abundance of the blessing, that then God is just not going to remove the enemy from you, but he will tear down and scatter the enemy even as the enemy is leaving you. That, 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 that's good news is because not only is he trying to bless you in your environment, but he will bless you that you don't even have to worry about your enemies because though you see them, they also see you. And when you see them, do not fret, be not dismayed, because though they are coming toward you, there is a God that has already provided seven exits for them to take because of the abundance of the blessing being on you. you you ever get to that place where you just knew something was about to happen to you and, and then it did not happen it was because the enemy saw the blessing of the Lord upon you and, and when the blessing of the Lord is upon you then the enemy doesn't know what to do because the enemy can't handle the blessing of the Lord upon you maybe that is why the psalmist picks it up and says it like this the Lord is my light 
and my salvation. Whom shall I wish I had a Bible reader right through here? Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? Here it go with the enemy. <laughs> Even my foes come up upon me. They stumble and they fall. Because God has a way of standing next to you when your enemies are coming toward you. And when God is standing next to you while your enemies are coming toward you, then Paul picked it up from there and said, if God be for us, then he is more than the whole world. Hey, anybody got any enemies that the Lord has taken care of? I, I hear King Jehoshaphat saying it like this. You need not to fight in this battle because this battle is not yours. It is the, when the blessing of the Lord is upon you, even when your enemies come toward you, they'll see the blessing of the Lord upon you and every attack that they try to set up against you, God will scatter it right before their very eyes. And I believe it's a good place not only to thank God for the blessing of your environment, but thank God for the blessing in spite of your enemy. Can, could you just turn your face toward heaven and tell God thank you. But thank you because I got some enemies, but it didn't work out. But thank you because they made some plans, but it didn't succeed. Thank you that they scandalized my name, but you're still restoring me. Thank you that they lied on me, but you're still blessing me. So thank you that they talked about me, but I still woke up this morning because God can handle my enemies while I handle his commands. Because if I obey him, then the blessing of the Lord is, is upon me. But not only that, I'm, I'm through. I'm through. I kept you long enough. I'm, I'm through. This, this, this is, this is, this is the last thing, and then, then we're through, we're through, we're through, we're through. This is what he says. He says, um, and and the blessing, if you if you fully obey the commands, the blessing looks like this. You will be the head and not the tail. You'll be above and not beneath. You'll be the lender and not the borrower. No, you've missed it. You've missed it. You've missed it. You've missed it. Because, because we, we, if, if not careful, we're going to shout that we the head and not the tail. If we're not careful, we're going to shout that we are above and not beneath. If we're not careful, we're going to shout that we're the lender and not the borrower. But that's not what the text says. <laughs> Help me, Holy Ghost. The text says, if you obey. <laughs> Come on, talk back to me now. In, in other words, it's conditional. <laughs> you, 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 you just don't wake up and become the head and not the tail. No, you just don't live any type of way you want to live and then think you always going to be above and not beneath. No, no, you don't, you don't allow yourself to just waste things and resources that God has given you and then think you're going to be the lender and not the borrower. No, you got to obey his commands. <laughs> can, can, I, can, can you just help me real fast? Uh, uh, you got to obey his commands. So, so, so then, preacher, uh, that's wonderful, but how do I obey his commands? So glad you asked. The first thing is you, you, you got to learn how to focus yourself. In other words, you've got to learn how to get everything that is not of the command out your focus. Get, get, get stuff out your ear. Get stuff out your view. Stop. Uh, whew, I feel my help right through there. Stop focusing on negative stuff. Stop focusing on petty stuff. Stop focusing on stuff that, that, that listen, can I just preach it the way I feel it in my heart? Listen, it's some stuff folk ain't going to apologize about, and that's all right. Forgiveness ain't for them. Forgiveness is for you. Learn how to forgive and move on, because when you're focused on what God is doing for you you don't have time to be carrying unforgiveness in your heart all right let me just go ahead and press it right there because you've got to focus yourself because listen the devil has had you burdened broken and busy down and out depressed oppressed suppressed all because you forgot to put yourself back in focus because when you put yourself back in focus hear the word of scripture the earth is the lord's and the fullness there 
of when you put yourself back in focus all of a sudden you start seeing things clearly so you got to focus so can I just go ahead and help you real fast this is how you focus. go on and start reading the Bible and don't wait till you're about to fall asleep so you can read your Bible because if you open it up while you sleep you're gonna fall asleep anyway uh, can, can I just say that so learn how to wake up in the morning and and read the Word of God not only in the morning but even on your lunch break that not only on your lunch break but even when you get off learn how to read the Word of God because this is what the Bible says that when you read the Word of God on his law doeth he meditate day and night and he she shall be like a tree planted by the streams of water that shall produce fruit in its season so when you focus you've got to read the word of God the other way you got to focus is you got to have a prayer life and not just a prayer moment a prayer moment is when you need God to do something real quickly but a prayer life is when you talk to him and it doesn't have to be that you wait till Sunday morning to get to the altar to talk to him it can look like when you pull up to the stop sign you such invoked in the conversation of God that you and God are having to the point you sitting at a stop sign waiting for it to turn green why it's because you're caught up in the conversation that you're having with God because you got a prayer life and not a prayer moment when you have a prayer life and not a prayer moment this is how it looks it looks like even if God doesn't say yes to the blessing that you want to have you can accept God's no and still praise him like he did say yes because you understand through your prayer life that he knows what's best for you even though your weary eyes cannot see. Is there anybody in here that can say, I'm not only going to read his word, but I'm also going to talk to him because I'm trying to stay focused. Not only do you stay focused, but the second thing is you got to follow. You got to follow. In other words, you got to follow him. Not, 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 not yourself. You don't. You didn't wake yourself up this morning. So since you didn't wake yourself up this morning, don't try to lead yourself through the day that you didn't wake yourself up in. You got to learn how to yield to the Holy Spirit and allow the Holy Spirit to guide you and order your steps. Because I'm just crazy enough to believe that if you walk in the path that He has laid out for you, that you will get to the place where you want to get to, and you won't even realize that it was going to take you a shorter time for you to get there because you've been obedient and you remained following Him. In other words, you, you made sure that you were going to follow the footsteps of the path that he has ordered. And even though you saw another way, hear the word of scripture, there is a way that seemeth right unto man, but in the end leadeth there unto death. All right, you don't know that, but let me say this one to you. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Is there anybody in here that understands in order for you to be a good leader you got to learn how to be a good follower and when you are a good follower you have learned how to say order my steps in your word is there anybody in here that is determined I'm going to walk in his word I'm going to step in his word I'm going to stand on his word because you got to follow him not only must you remain focused not only must you follow but last and finally you got to be firm you got to be firm God help us because we're living in a time, uh, uh, Brother bro Billy, we live in a time where, where, where we have some weak Christians. God help me. At the first sight of opposition, they won't go crying, woe is me. Lord don't care. He must have forgot about me. No. You got to learn how to stand firm. Help me, Holy Ghost. Can, can I just go there? There's a word that the black church uses. It, they, they say you got to be steadfast. <laughs> Come on, talk to me. My soul getting happy. You, you got to be steadfast. You, you got to be unmovable. You can't allow the winds of worrying to blow you back and forth. When, when you stand firm on his word, come what may, because you know his word says, nay, in all things, you and I are more than a conqueror. You gotta stand firm. You gotta have. You gotta be steadfast. You gotta be steadfast. Somebody can testify, whether you're in, 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 in person or you're watching. Somebody can testify that that, that you got a diagnosis, and, and 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 they said to you, "We ain't got no cure," but 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 you still trust God because doctors may not have a cure, but you have a healer. 
Help me, Holy Ghost. Don't, don't push me. And, and, and when you got a healer, then, then you're able to say, all right, you may not have a cure, but I got a healer, so I'm going to trust him anyhow. You, because when you trust him anyhow, you know that anyhow religion will, will make the devil mad and scared of you because you, you know you know too much about him that you still going to trust him anyhow. And when, when you have that anyhow religion, that's when you walk in church and you give God praise and people saying, well, I, I wonder why they praising God so hard. It's because all of the hell that I went through anyhow, I'm still here this morning. And when, when you got that anyhow religion and, and people say, why you still got a smile on your face and you said, because I got pain in my body, but anyhow, the Lord has been good to me. But when you got that anyhow religion, it's when you got hell in your home, but you realize that he's still at your house and if you call on him, it's anyhow. Come here, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They said, we will not bow to your image. But anyhow, even if he doesn't deliver us, we still going to trust him. We still going to serve him. We still going to worship him. Is there anybody in here that can open up your mouth and say anyhow? Okay. So, 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 so now that you obey the, the commands, because in obeying the commands, you learn how to focus. You learn how to follow. You learn how to be firm. When you do those three things, then you can go back and realize the abundance. That you're the head and not the tail. You, you are above and not beneath. You're the lender and not the borrower. This, 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 I was trying to figure out how, how to make it come alive, how, how to put it in imagery. And, and the only thing I could think of, and y'all bear with me, the only thing I can think of is that, that, you know, in some families, they got the favorite child. They, they, they got the favorite relative. And, and in some families, they, they do things for everybody else. But when it comes to you, they always too busy for you. And, 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 but, but, but there is a God who, who's never too busy for you. And come on, I ain't talking about your family. I'm talking about your neighbor's family. Come on, let's talk about it. There, there, there's a God who, who makes a way for you. And, 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 and then they start wondering, well, how did you get that? And, and how'd you get this? And, and then all of a sudden you start saying, no, it ain't because of you. Because it's almost like I'm the black sheep of the family. It's almost like y'all do everything for everybody else but not me. But, but even though you've forgotten about me, there is a God who made me a promise that if I obey his word, he'll make me the head and not the tail. He'll make me above and not beneath. He'll make me the lender and not the borrower. You, you ever had to bless somebody that when you asked them for something, they said they didn't have it, but when they needed it, you went on and blessed them because you realized it. he made you the lender and, and not the borrower. You, you ever been at a place to where you were trying to figure out why does somebody always get the promotion before you and then all of a sudden out of nowhere, God took you off that job and put you at another job and you're making more than you was on the first job. It's because he made you to be above and, and not beneath. He made you to be the head and not the tail. Don't worry about Negroes who think a little of you or people who overlook you. There is a God that has a blessing that will overtake you and when the blessing overtakes you, you'll realize I'm blessed and I'm going to stay blessed not because of you but because I stand on his word because I trust him because he is able to do exceedingly <laughs> and abundantly above everything that I can ask or imagine come on stand on your feet I'm through, I'm through. God bless you yeah yeah God bless you God bless you God bless you <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> I got more to give <laughs> <laughs> don't think I don't know. I got more to give. But, but I heard the Spirit saying, go and let them people go and let them go live in their blessed life. Come on. Uh, come, come, so can we leave church today saying, listen, I may not have my best life, but I got my blessed life. And I'll show you how I'm living my blessed life. Come on. Doors of church are open. Doors of church are open. This is the invitation. It's twofold today. It's twofold today. The first invitation for the one that does not know the Lord Jesus and the pardoning of your sin. 
you've never given your life to the Lord. I want to tell you, just the fact that you're alive, you're blessed. But when you give your life to him, it is the abundance of the blessing. And, 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 and I really want you to get to that place in life where you're living in the abundance of the blessing. I, I, I just don't want blessings to come upon you. I want them to overtake you. God have mercy. Because that's what the scripture says. If you obey, they won't just come upon you. They'll overtake you. So I, I want them to overtake you. But, but you've got to obey. You've got to be uh, a part of him. So if you're here today, you've never given your life to the Lord Jesus. If you're watching, the invitation is not only for persons who are here in the house, but even if you're in virtual space, if you're watching, if you're here, the blessing of the Lord, that blessing that maketh rich and addeth no sorrow, that blessing that he says, and I'll pour you out a blessing that you won't even have room enough to receive. But the second fold, the, the second part of this blessing, this, this, this invitation, hallelujah, is for the person that, 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 that is blessed and you're living in the abundance of the blessing. But, but, but you need to show God some appreciation. Yeah, you need to show God some, you need to tell God thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, 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 and this is what I want to do. Um, I, I want to ask you to bow your head. Um, it's, it's not about your neighbor. It's not about the preacher. It's about you and God. I, I want to ask you to bow your head. And, and, and in your own way, just, just begin to tell God, thank you. Don't, don't take blessings for granted. Just, just tell God, thank you. All the blessings that you have. There's blessings you, you just now thinking of. You forgot about. Blessings are going to overtake you. And as your head is bowed, I want to pray for you today. I want to pray for you today. This is my prayer. Hallelujah. <laughs> God, I feel you. This is my prayer for you. Is that you come back into the covenant of the Lord. Whether you are saved. Or, I, I, it's not just for the, the unsaved. It's for the saved. I'm talking to the saved now. That you come back into the covenant of the whole oh God, I thank you. I'm not even asking you to come back into church. I want you back into the covenant with the Lord. You, because I want you to live in the abundance of the blessing. Every head bowed, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you right now. For every person under the sound of my voice. And Father, I thank you for their life. I thank you that you have created them and you have called them into life for such a time as this. Now, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that your spirit will loose those shackles, those spirit will loose those chains, your spirit will loose those fetters. God, I pray that you would set them free, that they're able to come back into covenant relationship with you. And as they come back into covenant relationship with you, I pray, God, that you would continue to honor your word. That the blessing shall come upon them and overtake them. Hallelujah. God, I thank you right now for the testimonies that we are about to hear of how blessings are overtaking your people. God, I thank you right now for the testimonies that are going to come forth about how you make a way out of nowhere. I thank you right now for the testimonies that are going to come forth that will give you all the glory because only you can do it. And so God, I pray now, in Jesus' name, hallelujah, that we leave rejoicing. We leave praising. We leave celebrating. To the blessing of the Lord be upon you. The blessing of the Lord be upon you in the name of God the Father, 
God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and here it is that the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, hallelujah, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit may it rest with you. May it abide in you. May it rule over you now and forevermore. And the people of God say amen, 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 amen. Come on, won't you high five somebody? Shake somebody's hand, hug somebody. Tell them I'm leaving church today on my blessed life. Come on, we'll see you next week. That's how we're going to end service today. It's over. God, I thank you that I'm blessed. <laughs>